Welcome to Hauser's House. I'm here again with my Uncle John, and I'm very happy to talk about my grandmother today. Um, she had a big influence on me as a, ch as a child. I knew she grew up as in Africa. She was born and raised in Africa as a child. And uh, it's important for me to know about those stories and what she did in her experiences in a different country and culture. So I have my uncle here to uh, give some um, knowledge and just to tell me some stories and let you know some stories about my grandma and even my great grandma and, and grandpa. So Uncle John. Yeah, my, uh, you know, the family's pretty interesting when you talk about the two sides and they're very diverse. We've shared one story already about Grandpa Hauser. Uh, now this one goes to Grandma Hauser. Um, she is one of six girls that were all born in Africa. Uh, three of them died in Africa and three of them made it back. Uh, my mom being the youngest of all, um, she first came to the United States when she was uh, 16 years old. Wow. But uh, one of the things that um, has always resonated in my heart and soul is the stories that mom and, and Grandma Kramer uh, told about things that happened in Africa. And I'd like to share just a couple of those with you. Um, um, Grandma Hauser, uh, or Grandma Kramer, uh, one day was telling me a story about how Grandpa Kramer got sick and um, she had to go to a doctor and there wasn't another doctor uh, in, in that village. So she got into the car and she had to drive 10, 15 miles to get to the next village. And in her frantic uh, driving, she hit a cow on the side of the road and killed it. Wow. And um, because of that, she still got the doctor and got back. But at that point, she said, I'm not safe to drive. And she never drove again. And that was kind of an interesting story. But there's two stories of uh, faith that uh, really chill me when I uh, think of these two stories. Um, one of them I'll tell you about the faith and God's protection upon her. Uh, my grandpa and grandma, they were traveling through a village that uh, had a chief that every new moon would eat the heart of a human being mm. and somehow felt that this would give him extra power or something. And, and uh, I saw a picture of this chief. He wore a white suit and a white fedora hat, but he was raw in the cannibalistic uh, sense that he still practiced that tradition. And they were passing through his village uh, one time and uh, the new moon was up and Grandma Kramer knew that her caravan of people would be in danger. So she confronted the chief and my grandma had uh, false teeth. Mm. And she pulled her teeth out of her mouth and set it down on a bench in the center of the, the, the village and says, if you touch one of my people, I will send my teeth to eat you, to consume you in the night. And he was wow. so afraid of this white magic or black magic or whatever you want to call it, that that they were able to spend their night. She gathered her teeth the next day and they passed through that village. And, and just that God gave her this, this, this thought yeah. of, you know, what to do to protect everybody in, in her uh, missionary troop. So, so your grandma, my great grandma, yes, she was responsible for like a village or a community within Africa or, uh, you know, well, they traveled through Africa, mm -hmm. you know, uh, spreading the word of God, and they started a missionary there. And that missionary um, was the largest missionary in, in the Belgian Congo. Wow. And Grandma Hauser actually translated the Bible into two African languages. That's yeah. amazing to me. It, to, uh, the whole Bible to translate it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they were there uh, missionaries for 35 years. You know, I think I found an old book, Uncle John, of, um, and I don't know if you have it, my dad, ha where the book is, uh -huh. but it references how 
uh, Nelson, our, uh, the publisher Nelson, who publishes the Bible, mm -hmm. had reached out to uh, my great grandmother Kramer right. about publishing the Bible in uh, a different language or dialects. So that there was, I, I saw a book like that when we were going through Grandpa's house a couple years ago. We're going to have to kind of do a little more research and see if we can locate where it is right now. Where exactly that is. That's amazing. The, 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 the other story I'd like to share with you is probably the, the greatest story that for me about mm -hmm. the power of prayer. Yeah. And, um, uh, as you know, in Africa, they have swarms of locusts that go through the country at times. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a, uh, I don't know what you call them, but there was this massive flight of locusts traveling through Africa, and they consume everything. Mm -hmm. And she would tell me how um, at times the villagers liked it when there was some locusts because they would trap them. And in nets, and then they dry them out, and that was food. They dry them out and eat them like potato chips. Mm. But when these blooms, if you want to call it, of massive amount of locusts would form, they could go through the country yeah. and just consume every bit of vegetation and lay it barren. So what you see in the movies is true. Oh, Sometimes yeah. you see swarms of locusts. Yeah, the sky would mm -hmm. turn black. Right. And she told me this, this one time there was a huge bloom of locusts that was going through the countryside and they got down on their knees and they prayed that God would spare their farm because that was their food. Yeah. And the locusts would travel through valleys and around like veins. And she said, literally, and she said, as they got down on their knees and prayed that God would spare them, the locust bloom turned and veered off and separated away and left their farm untouched in wow. the food. And it's just like, oh my gosh, the yeah. answer to prayer. Um, you know, uh, I don't care what anybody says. When, when, when you have someone like my grandmother who firsthand was there mm -hmm. and not just telling a story that somebody told that somebody else told that somebody else, that she witnessed that, it's just what a powerful thing to know that, that God, you know, yeah. it, it listens to your prayers. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Uncle yeah. John. It's important to me to remember those stories and kind of like the legacy and just, you know, where where we come from. Yeah.